Hello everyone. So let us discuss the radiology questions which were asked in the INI CT in November 2022. This paper had few unique things. If you compare it with the May 2022 INI CT exam, May 2022 paper was skewed towards basic sciences. You had more questions on first and second year uh, subjects and more visuals on basic sciences. Radiology was not too much there in the May 2022 exam. While I am very happy to share with you that November 2022 exam was having more equivocal or more balanced approach to the paper. We had representation from all subjects including radiology and also important thing is that still there was some predominance of first second year subjects. Like if I look at the older ratios, uh, they were going up to 60-40 also. That means first second year 60%. Third, fourth year, 40%. But this year it was 55-45. First, second year, 55%. Third, fourth year, 45%. Which is good actually. And in this particular video, I will discuss the radiology questions which I could gain from recall by the students. And let's see, you know, what were the answers of those questions. One question that we have always discussed in the class. CT scan has radiation exposure. When we do a CT brain, the radiation exposure is equivalent to 100 to 150 chest x-rays. CT abdomen goes up to 500 chest x-rays. Here they had asked a question, female is reproductive age group, is advised for CT head, for headache, what will you do? We need to know the LMP first because we want to make sure that we are not giving radiation to a pregnant lady. The correct answer to the question was ask LMP and if you remember, this is the story we were discussing in the class when we were doing the radiation exposure. I told you in the class that CT scan has radiation exposure. We should ask the LMP before we get a CT done. Number two was a focal lesion on NCCT. This is very critical word in the question, non-contrast CT. Whenever they say non-contrast CT and on the CT you could see, uh, you know, uh, images were not very clear in the paper. They had an image like this liver with a heterogeneous image here which has some white here. Now what is this white thing that you see in the image? Is it a scar or is it calcium? This is where the question comes into play. The image was non-contrast CT. On a non-contrast CT, if you see something white, it has to be calcium. So that means we are looking at a calcified structure in the liver. Now, hepatocellular cancer, we will not diagnose on a NCCT. HCCC will be diagnosed on a triple phase CT, where you will see arterial phase enhancement, washout in the portal venous phase, and capsule in the equilibrium phase. Abscess will be a rim enhancing lesion with edema around it, FNH would be an enhancing lesion on a contrast scan in the arterial phase with a central scar which is less enhancing. The correct answer was NCCT showing calcification. The most likely diagnosis is the hydrated cyst. And if you remember, this is what we were discussing in the class when I showed you a calcified hydrated cyst. I told you if it is a NCCT, we think of calcium, okay, not tumor. Next, they have used a unique question here. This time, they have asked a question on a CT of the liver and they have asked to identify the segment marked in the orange. Now, I want you to understand that in liver, the segments are divided on the basis of hepatic veins and portal vein. Hepatic veins and portal veins. So, on the left lobe, so one is the caudate lobe. On the left lobe, the superior segment medially is the segment 2, inferiorly is 3, superiorly 4A, inferiorly 4B. So, 2, 3, 4A, 4B are segments of left lobe. This is very, very important. Okay. In the right side, the segments will be 5 in the right anterior, then right posterior will be 5, 6, then 7, 8. So, we go like this, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, let's imagine a section now. Suppose the section is above the level of portal vein, you will see segment 2, 4A, 8, 7. If it is below it, you will see 3, 4B, 5 and 6. Now, try to understand with me here. Uh, just give it, I will show you the CT again. Now, so we are at the, this blue thing is the portal vein. We are below the, we are not at the level of the hepatic veins. We are at the level of the portal vein. This is the IVC. So, when we have to identify the segment, this is segment 5. So, this is 5, 6. 4B, I am going back to the image. So, 5, 6, 4B, 3. So, this is 3, 4B, 5 and 
six. So this is how this diagram is the clue to identify. In the left lobe, two three four a four b. This is the straight how we label it. In the right lobe, you label it as five, then six. We start at the bottom part, five, six posterior, then seven and eight. This is how you do it. Okay. So I hope you were able to answer. Now there is an approach in trauma patients nowadays that why don't we do a whole body CT in a patient with road traffic accident? There is some controversy. Some people uh, I recommend it. Some people don't recommend it. But how do we go about it? We do a NCCT of the brain, NCCT cervical spine, CCT thorax, abdomen, and pelvis. These are the CTs that we do in a patient with road traffic accidents. NCCT brain, NCCT cervical spine. C C T thorax, C C T abdomen, C C T pelvis, and obviously the answer in this choices was C T of the upper limb is not a part of whole body C T in a patient with road traffic accident. Next, we had a patient where the child had the key word here was respiratory distress cyanosis. Cyanosis was the key word, and you had a typical X-ray shown to you where the lung fields were oligomic. You could see a right-sided aortic arch, a boot-shaped heart. This is the typical Corrin Sabath appearance. This is seen in tetralogy of Fallet. If you remember my classes, I think all my classes I have told you tetralogy of Fallet is one of the most most important question they will ask you in the exam, and the key words will be cyanosis, which was there in the question, oligemia, boot or coronary sabot shape heart. So this was the question that they have asked, and if you remember, I, I met I, almost all of you in my face to face classes this year, and I told all of you that they will ask you one question on congenital heart disease. I told you the most commonly they will show you tetralogy of Fallet, but in the next year's exam, remember they will keep the topic same, but they will ask TAPVC. They will show you the snowman heart. The key word is topic repeat. INICT topic repeat is very strong. I see students missing out on it. Today, in today's era, instead of being, you know, you know, working too hard, it is time to work smart. You need to know previous year questions. AIMS capsule, DVT are very, very high yield revisions for INICT. They have proved um, their metal umpteen number of times, including this year's paper. People who have done uh, AIMS capsule would have had the advantage. So. And PPE kit, uh, which is the DAMS previous year paper explanation kit, where there are videos discussing the previous year papers, is a must do. Don't miss it before the May INICT exam. Also, we are also starting a INICT test and discussion fresh batch in the first week of December, which will end by April, so that you have a massive revision, a uh, you know, a deep revision for the INICT topics with a test and discussion format. This course has proved. Uh, game changer for many students so i am sure you know uh, you will you know will be announcing it soon on the dams daily social media channels next i told you if you remember in my classes i told you they will use different patterns this was the pattern where they had a question on match the following they, this is unique they have asked signs string sign inverted umbrella sign football sign rat tail sign and if i match them correctly the answer was string sign is seen in pyrol pyloric stenosis on a barium If they say investigation of choice of pyloric stenosis, it will be ultrasound. Inverted umbrella sign is a sign of bowel tuberculosis, ileocecal tuberculosis. Football sign is seen in pneumoperitoneum. Rat tail sign is seen in CA esophagus, aplasia both. But here the answer was only aplasia, so we'll go with aplasia here. So if you remember, this is what I told you in the class that aplasia cardia can have bird beak appearance, rat tail appearance both, and this is what they utilized in the question. and this is where we were discussing the football sign of pneumoperitoneum in the class in a supine view especially in a infant when the air rises up it creates a football like appearance on the x-ray abdomen supine next we had a patient with prostate cancer prostate cancer if you remember in all my classes i told you is one of the most important cause of osteoblastic metastasis to the bone this patient had pr prostate cancer you did a bone scan because of those osteoblastic metastases there is increased uptake of technetium mdp in the bone and there is so much activity there is so so much uptake in the skeleton that the uptake which would have happened in the you know your uh, kidneys and the soft tissue is suppressed this is called a super scan super scan means extremely high uptake in the skeleton with reduced uptake in the soft tissue which was described in the image and why do you have super scan in this patient because of the osteoblastic lesions ca prostate is a very very important cause probably the most important cause of osteoblastic metastasis in a male 
if they say osteoblastic metastasis in a female go with ca breast as the answer this was probably a direct repeat question they showed a gas below the diaphragm if you have attended my classes my youtube videos i told you they will ask you one new more definitely this is new more peritoneum and you think of bowel perforation you have to give iv fluids you have to do exploratory laparotomy the answer was 2 and 3 and this is where in the class we were discussing gas below the diaphragm this is what i told you it will be asked in inict and it has been asked yet again the next is a question where i'm not really sure about the image but most people said that there was a left kidney showing a they mentioned a vascular lesion in the kidney where you had some fat densities dark areas as dark as the subcutaneous fat think of angiomyelopoma however in the past they have even asked oncocytoma which has a central scar renal cyst can also be asked which will be non enhancing with fluid density so we are not really sure on the image on this question but i asked many students and most students said that it was a angiomyelopoma so i thought you know you can look at it and keep uh, keep in mind this is one of the question so they had a focal hepatic lesion focal renal lesion and next you had a typical x ray showing you the coffee bean appearance this is how the sigmoid colon looks like you can also see dilated large bowel so if you see dilated small bowel with hostray okay i'll show you if you see dilated small bowel loops with hostration and the convergence towards the right side then we think of cecal valvulus this is an image of cecal valvulus on the other hand in our exam they were converging towards the left the high, topmost part apex was towards the right the, it was a hostral and the large bowel looked dilated the image was showing a sigmoid valvulus this is coffee bean appearance some of the students said that they wanted they asked to identify some said it was they asked to manage so you will untwist the sigmoid colon using colonoscopy that would be the management in this case i i hope you know this is i hope you remember that we were discussing at length in the class that if you do a barium enema in a patient with sigmoid valvulus you would get a bird beak appearance if you do a, a x ray you will see a coffee bean sign okay now there are two questions where i don't have a recall but there was a question where they had described a breast lesion and we were supposed to tell the birats most students told me that it was a fibroadenoma in the image or in the question described now only thing i want you to know is if it was a calcified fibroadenoma a uh, involuting calcified fibroadenoma it is definitely benign it will be labeled as birats 2 however if they say circumscribed oval mass on com ultrasound compatible with fibroid non calcified oval mass will be classified as birats 3 so it depends on what was asked in the question from to the best of my understanding calcification was not mentioned in the question if it was it is birats 2 if it was not it will be birats 3 okay so i don't have the exact choices so i have kept this question here and uh, this is where you know at length in the class we were discussing what is birats what are different categories and if you remember i told you in the class i told you with confidence that one of these birats tyrats pyrats will is definitely asked in the exam and corats okay so this time they have gone with the more classic version of the question where they have asked birats and there was another question on ncc diagnostic criteria so Uh, you know the question the people could not give me the full question but the question was all of the following are diagnostic criteria of uh, ncc except so absolute diagnostic criteria for ncc are histological demonstration of the parasite from brain biopsy this was written in the question so this is a absolute criteria so it was said which of them is not a criteria so this is definitely a criteria if the biopsy shows the parasite is a absolute criteria for ncc direct visualization of a subretinal cysticercus it was not there in the choice but it is also absolute criteria conclusive demonstration of scolex within a cyst on neuroimaging on mri if you can see a scolex it is again a absolute criteria for ncc so these are the three absolute criteria for ncc biopsy showing you parasite radiological imaging showing you scolex and subretinal cysticercus visualized but on neuroimaging there are major criteria includes okay the criteria are cystic lesion without a scolex enhancing lesions multilobulated cystic lesion typical brain parenchymal calcification so 
some people said that if the brain parenchymal calcification was also mentioned in the question, confirmatory neuroimaging criteria will be resolution of cystic lesion after cysticidal drug, spontaneous resolution of a single lesion, migration of ventricular cyst demonstrated on sequential neuroimaging studies. Minor neuroimaging criteria includes obstructive hydrocephalus. So, some people said the questions were biopsy showing you the uh, parasite, periventricular calcification, hydrocephalus and muscle calcification. So, based on this NCC, uh, the question will be, these are all the criteria used, major and minor and absolute criteria of uh, NCC on radiological imaging. So, I hope, you know, the choices are not fully recalled here, but this is what was asked in the question. So, I hope you get the topic. Now, all these questions, uh, you know, if you will appreciate that these are all from the topics that we have discussed in the classes and I am very proud to say that we have been doing it for the last two decades now. And I want you to rest assured that when you are with us, we, we know what is medical education. I think I have given my entire life to uh, medical education and I know how deep we need to go. Now, let me help you with two things. Number one is always, always remember for INICT, start with the PPE kit. Look at the previous year questions from the eMedicos app. Then do the AIMS capsule, DAMS AIMS capsule from the short courses of the eMedicos app, DVT. These are three most important things. But because now you have more time for the May exam, you can go week by week by following the INICT TND. First week of December, we'll start the next batch of INICT TND. Suppose you were not able to do up to your expectations in this exam, you need to develop the mindset called as growth mindset. In this mindset, we totally believe in and I totally agree with the thought process that either you win or you learn. So if you are giving an exam, suppose you have not done up to your expectation, don't lose heart, don't feel bad, you are learning something. We may not know the lesson right now, but it will come to us, it will reveal to us when we go forward. So it is important to cut out the emotion from the emotional impact of the result, and but remember the lesson. I have seen this year, I, it is there on the Damn Silly YouTube channel, there is this girl who had a 18,000 rank in the NEAT PG exam. She came back, did a strength weakness analysis, followed her notes, followed her test, gave her grand test. She was, you know, utilizing all the crisp, concise DAMS materials. And the she went on to do a, get a rank 13 in the November INICT. The interview is there on the Damn Silly channel. So if we learn the lesson, we, we can ma improve massively. You you would not be able to imagine somebody with a 18,000 rank improving to 13. But it has happened this year. And even in the past, I have seen students from a not qualified rank improving up to a top 50 rank. And if you if I go even further back, there is an interview on the Damn Silly channel, uh, I think in 2015 odd, uh, where this girl uh, was not qualified in EPG, came back uh, next year with a rank 1 in the subsequent year. So, it is always possible to make a big comeback. But the idea is in the mindset. If you believe me, the entire idea is do a strength weakness analysis, find what went, went wrong, take the lesson, cut the guilt, take the lesson. Once you have the lesson, work on your weaknesses, everything is possible. You can improve massively and keep reminding yourself, apna time apun khud laega.